This is the <gasps> 50 watts plus 50 watt TPA 3116D2 digital amplifier board official version. It costs $12.91 shipped at the time of shooting this video. Uh, it's specified to run off uh, for 4.5 to 26 volts DC and it's specified to deliver 22 watts per channel into 8 ohms at a 24 volt uh, power supply or 65 watts per channel at 4 ohms at the same power supply or finally 16 watts per channel into 4 ohms at 12 volts which is the same as every other amplifier does at 12 volts it is specified for an A-weighted noise of minus 80 decibel volts, though, which is uh, quite good, although I generally don't measure things A-weighted. We, we, we have to take a look at the noise with, in some detail, and it's specified for 90% efficiency, which is uh, about the same as all the other modern Class D things. Despite that, though, I did check on the heatsink they have put on this board, is about half the size on every measurement as the recommended heatsink in the datasheet. So, this thing is probably going to run quite hard under heavy load. Beyond that, though, the build quality of the board seems to be quite good. The PCB is uh, normal thickness and quite solid, and the solder joints on the de underside really look uh, very good. In general, there's nothing to complain about. And the board does come with these uh, silly huge voltage, I think, believe these are 400 volt rated MKP capacitors uh, for the input filter. They're just one microfarad. And this is something they do to make it look all audio filey and stuff, which is just stupid and silly, to be honest. It comes uh, with two Nishikon. Nishikon, absolutely non-faked Nishikons for the power filtering, which are rated at 1000 microfarads and 25 volts, which is a bit not good for an amplifier that's specified to run up to 26. So, in order to use this thing at its rated voltage, you have to replace these with 35 volt rated caps. I'm going to do that prior to testing. Also, curiously, these uh, capacitors are different series. This one's a PS, and this one's a PW. Not that I think it makes any difference, since they are guaranteed to be fake. The 8-bit filter seems to be of quite high quality. I haven't uh, checked much in the datasheet debate the recommended practice of a filter, but some initial testing I did prove that it seems to perform quite well, so uh, this filter seems to be very well designed and it's got quite a few little components to go with it, so I'm not surprised if it's a nice performance. Anyway, let's hook this thing up for a proper audio test after replacing the caps and we'll quantify its performance properly. And with the caps taken out of the PCB and placed beside a genuine Nishikon PW cap, it's pretty plain to see that they are indeed copies. Although they are quite well made copies I must say. They've copied the top and they have even copied the bottom. But they did fail with a font so unless uh, Nishikon have changed their font since this one was made uh, I'm going to go with calling these fakes. Here's the test jig. We've got the amplifier board with a little input adapter here with the two uh, shielded RCA cables going to whatever input source or input short circuit that might be required for the test. And we've got a switchable 4 8 ohm load to go into the output there. And we've got a scope probe hooked up to the HP 339A distortion meter and power is being supplied by that TTI power supply there feeding through a couple of lead acid batteries there to smooth everything out a bit. The tests are going to be performed at 26 volts. But before moving to the distortion meter here is the out of band noise on this amplifier. I've checked it about the same on both channels and it's uh, 
about 35 millivolts RMS or 100 millivolts peak to peak at uh, just about 400 kilohertz, which is uh, a very good performance, I'd say. Starting at the actual audio tests, the noise floor seems to be just about 300 microvolts or minus 70 decibel volts, which is a relatively good result. Moving on to distortion, the chip is specified to do 22 watts per channel into 8 ohms at 24 volts, so we should see slightly more than that uh, since we're running it off of 26 volts. 22 watts is 13.27 volts and we're the 0.3% full scale distortion range. So let's see what we can get. Uh, that is just about 0.1% there. At 13.33 volts uh, we are pushing pretty much dead on 22 watts. Moving up to the 1% clipping power test, we've got 17.3 volts, which is uh, about 37 watts. And moving on to very hard clipping at 10%, we get 19.15 volts, which is about 46 watts. Moving on to 4 ohm loading, since the chip is actually rated for that, let's see how high we can get before breaching 0.1%. Uh, there seems to be something funny going on, it doesn't seem to like that, the distortion is still like, climbing, I think it's going into overheating protection. And yes indeed, the entire thing is smelling very warm and the tiny heatsink is too hot to touch. Yeah, the entire board's just warm from that, so really any 4 ohm performance is not really to be expected out of this thing. We couldn't even get a data point without it overheating right away. So I would not go as far as calling this a 4 ohm capable amplifier. Indeed, trying to push any kind of power, even just trying to get a single measurement out of this thing, just kicks it into thermal overload protection, which uh, makes it go into tick mode, so hey, at least we know the thermal protection is working. Anyway, with that flop out of the way, let's move on to the damping factor. So we've got it set to about half power at uh, roughly 11 watts. So let's zero it, turn off the load, we we'll get uh, 0.15 volts of drop which equals a, an output impedance of uh, 130 milliohms or a damping factor of 63 which I must say is uh, surprisingly good for one of these little cheap chip amps. So for crude frequency response test I've set it up to relative measurement with uh, the needle set to minus 2 dB there at about half output power. So let's see what it can do. At 10 hertz we're at minus 1.2, 20 hertz we're at minus 0.2, so we are basically flat there, and 0 dB at 30 hertz, so that's very good. Low frequency performance, and it's going to be absolutely razor flat after that. 100 hertz flat, 1k. Flat as you'd expect, 2k, 3k, 4k, 5k, 6k, getting perhaps 0.1 dB up there, 7k, 8k, 9k, yeah we're up 0.2 dB at 9k, up 0.2 dB at 10k, Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, up point four to be at fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, up point six at seventeen K, eighteen, nineteen and twenty. We are actually up point eight dB at twenty kilohertz, so that's a bit surprising. Yeah, but I've seen it before in these class D apps, we do tend to have a bit of a peak in the high frequencies, so let's move beyond 20k and see where we roll off. 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, no, it just gets louder, 6, 7, 8, 
29 came up was point 1.4 db 30k 40k 50k now we're rolling off 60k and it, ah, it's going into protection there it doesn't like 60k I don't think like 50k either uh, 40k is alright but we're still way up there yeah, it seems to start getting weird at about 40 something kilohertz but either way, you, this thing is basically flat for every audible range, so no complaints of every frequency response whatsoever. And in order to figure out the gain of the amplifier, I've set the internal oscillator to 0 dB here, and we'll just uh, switch over to the input level, and uh, we'll step up uh, 10 dB at a time to see where we end up. So we've got 10 dB gain, 20 dB gain, 30 dB gain full scale, minus 234.2. So we are at 25.8 dB of gain, which is quite normal. And let's just check the efficiency at about half power into 8 ohms. And sparing you the math, we are right now pushing 10.34 volts, which is... Uh, about 26.75 watts total into both channels and we are drawing 1.18 amps, we're drawing a bit less a moment ago and that was 30.42 watts which gives us an efficiency of just about 88% which is quite admirable and just for kicks, let's see if this thing is any better than a normal car radio when it comes to 14 volts operation with a 4 ohm load. And aside from it seeming to overheat even from this at this low supply rail, it seems to be pushing actually slightly more power than your average car stereo amplifier because we are pushing just about. 18, 19 watts into this volume load, but we are overheating doing that, so this thing is not really suitable for using a car stereo, I would say. And the clipping waveform on this thing is actually impressively clean with almost no high frequency crap getting through, even when we're just at the brink of clipping as we are now. As you can see, there's almost no clipping going on, yet the signal is still very clean. And if we move into harder clipping, the waveform does clean up quite a bit, but it really takes nothing to kick this amplifier into temperature protection mode. But, uh, yeah, what you can, can see on the scope here between ticks is just a very good, clean, linear clipping waveform that I'm very happy with. And that gives us a summary which looks something like this. So we've got a noise floor which is at uh, 300 microvolts or minus 70 decibel volts which is uh, good. Uh, for, for an amplifier module like this you certainly can't complain although it isn't really up there with the hi-fi amps which uh, go up uh, to 80 dBV, minus 80 dBV and beyond. The amplifier chip is specified for minus 80 dBV, A weighted, uh, and we are doing unweighted measurements here. So I'd wager if this uh, lives up to roughly to spec. The active band noise, 37 millivolts at 400 kilohertz, pretty good, nothing that's going to be an issue. Gain, 25.8 dB, pretty normal for an amplifier of this power class, nothing out of the ordinary. 130 milliohm 8 bit impedance, about to what you'd expect, but actually a bit better than you, what you'd expect. Uh, certainly, this should be adequate for most applications. Output power 22 watts per channel at 26 volts, and it's important to note that the supply voltage directly correlates to the output power since all of these. T uh, uh, values are output voltage limited, so that it's certainly performing just as you would expect an amplifier of this class to perform. There's nothing wrong with its output power. 
except if you try to use them with a four ring load, in which case yeah, you, it just doesn't work. And if you, even if you're trying to put out almost no power at all, it'll go into tick mode protection. So sadly, that makes this amplifier very unsuitable for, for instance, car use or anything that's got to do with four ohm loads or lower. Beyond that, fair frequency response. The low end roll off isn't bad, but we do get almost a decibel of gain above average at 20 kilohertz and beyond, so it's got a bit of a hump there. Not an issue unless you're trying to do something seriously hi fi, in which case you shouldn't be using an amplifier module like this. Efficiency at 88%, excellent for any amplifier, pretty uh, path of a course for a class D amplifier, although I have seen poorer results from China. And we do have temperature protection, which is very necessary with this tiny little heat sink there. And that's probably my biggest critique for the amplifier. You would really wish to upgrade this heat sink, but there's no real space to do it. You can kind of put one that extends over here, but it's stuck between these two caps, and there's just nowhere to put it. The entire thing runs quite hard, and the heatsink will get burning hot within seconds of you trying to push any kind of decent power out of it. But most music isn't averaging very high power levels, so for general use I would say that this amplifier module is likely to be an excellent performer. And especially compared to the last one I reviewed, I must say that this is a pretty good buy, and I'm indeed going to use it in a project. So make of that what you will. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.